What's good everyone? Thank you for stopping by to visit the channel for this upcoming game preview. If you want to stay updated in the world of college football, if you haven't done so already, pound that subscribe button and click the notification bell. Make sure you select all so you won't miss another video. Now that you have done all of that, let's get down to business. It is the return of the Big Ten, and we have a top 25 matchup as the Michigan Wolverines square off against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Now this is my first time doing a preview for Minnesota. So Minnesota fans, welcome to the channel. Michigan fans, you already know what we're about to do next. We always start off each preview with the tail of the tape. So with the tail of the tape, I like to review the overall quality between the two teams, and I like to review offense versus defense for both teams. If there is a clear separation within ranking of 11 spots or more, that team has the advantage. So as we review this, this game looks to be even, as the opening line suggested from Vegas. Based on the metrics, there are pushes with overall SP+, and with both teams having the ball on offense, as there is not a clear separation between the two. However, with F+, which is the combination of FEI and Bill Connolly's SP+, ranking, it has the Wolverines as a top 10 team in the preseason. SP Plus gives the Golden Gophers a 57% win probability and is favored by three, according to Bill Connolly. So we have to travel back in time to review Minnesota's previous game. So when Minnesota had their first drive, ending in an interception on third down, the defense held firm and stopped Auburn from scoring a touchdown inside of 10. Once that happened, the Golden Gophers seemed to have settled down when everything was not looking good initially. Even though the score was tied after the first quarter, Minnesota had a plus 20% advantage in success rate, and they beat Auburn up at the line of scrimmage in my opinion. The only reason why this game was as close as it was, was due to the fact that Auburn won the field position battle, they won the turnover battle, and they averaged more points per scoring opportunity inside the 40 yard line. Luckily for Minnesota, they had Tanner Morgan operating the offense and he had Rashad Bateman as his primary target. Not much has changed since January, along with an experienced offensive line and running back Mo Ibrahim, who was a bowling ball against that Auburn defense. There are two concerns, though, for the Golden Gophers. One is the loss of their offensive coordinator, Kirk Soraka, to Penn State. But Mike Sanford from Utah State is a capable replacement, in my opinion. His offense at Boise State finished 25th in offensive SP Plus in his only year there. And at Notre Dame, they finished 6th and 18th in his two years there. The second concern is they are hitting the reset button a little bit on defense. In the last four years, the Golden Gophers averaged a ranking of 30th in defensive SP+, and they finished 26th last year. Now, they do return some guys in the secondary, and it is their most experienced unit. But losing Antoine Winfield Jr. back there is a tough loss due to his ability to be an eraser. If you want more proof of that, see the Penn State game from last year when he declared the Penn State passing attack as a no-fly zone. After a rough start, in the Citrus Bowl against Alabama going down early given of an explosive play. The Wolverines did not play bad football, honestly, as you can see from the box score. The game went exactly as it looked when you're looking at the advanced box score. Michigan was remarkably efficient in the first half, averaging a 50% success rate in the first two quarters. Their offensive line was powerful as they paved the way for Zach Charbonnet and Hassan Haskins to churn out yards on standard downs. From a physical perspective, the Wolverines offensive line had their way with Alabama in this game. But a glaring issue in this game was the explosive plays they gave up on defense, which ultimately did them in, along with losing a turnover battle. For this year, the Wolverines has experienced some roster turnover in their offensive line, and they lose Shea Patterson at quarterback. Now, it could be said that replacing the offensive line will be a bigger task than replacing Patterson since they are returning one starter on the offensive line. I believe the Wolverines will go as far as Joe Milton takes them. He had glowing reviews out of fall camp, but as with most fall camp reports, they are mostly positive. Having said all of that, the coaches seem to be excited about his potential. The defense, which has been a staple of Michigan football since Harbaugh took over, and while they are losing some experience on that side of the ball, they do have athletes at linebacker and at defensive end. Quiddy Pay looks to build on his breakout 2019 season along with Aiden Hutchinson and fifth year senior Carlo Kemp and they are bringing in a lot of experience. The big knock on a Don Brown coach defense is they do not fare too well against aggressive offenses who push the ball down the field and force the secondary to play in space. So my keys of the game goes as follows. For Michigan, they have to control the line of scrimmage. I think for Michigan, it is important to establish control over the line against Minnesota who is breaking in new starters on that defensive line. 
Also, it is imperative that they get into as many standard down situations as possible to avoid obvious passing situations against Minnesota's experienced secondary. For Minnesota, I believe they have to let the stars be the stars of the game. Don Brown is willing to put his cornerbacks on an island with his blitz schemes, and that could leave Bateman with multiple one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Bateman averaged 20 yards per catch, and he had a 94% success rate in 2019. They must find another receiver to complement Bateman, so that is something to look for. Minnesota's offensive line must control this game and give Tanner Morgan time to scan the field and attack Michigan's secondary. So it's 2020. We have a season with no spring practice, so it is difficult to get a read on either team without having any tape. Vegas and the advanced metrics favor Michigan in this game, and both teams are experienced in their respective strengths. In a game like this, I lean a little bit more to the team with the experience at quarterback and the offensive line. And I think Michigan is going to put up points in this game, but I think Minnesota is going to make enough explosive plays to win this game. I got Minnesota to the score of 31 to 28. And that's a wrap for another game preview. So let me know what your thoughts are on the game in the comment section below. Give me your score prediction and also tell me why your respective team is going to win the game. I hope you enjoyed the video. All I ask is that you give the video a like. It helps the channel grow. And if you love college football as much as I do, hit that subscribe button if you want to stay updated with the latest previews and the occasional highlights. Minnesota fans, thank you for visiting the channel. Michigan fans, keep continuing to support the channel and visiting. Thank you all for watching.